As far as I'm concerned, this is the best Aragon yet. And that's not a phrase I say lightly. It's the new DF40 Automatic, and I believe it's gonna be released in the next couple of days. If you know anything about Aragon, you know three things. The first is that they're the granddaddy of micro brands. They've been around so long that that term wasn't even a thing when they started. Second, they're known for combining big, bold designs with high value watches, ones practically anyone can afford. And third, they make large watches huge watches, like 45 to 50 millimeter watches. But the thing is, that last one is something that's been changing. Over the last few years, they've been introducing some smaller and smaller models. And I think that's what makes this one so great, that it's perhaps the most accessible Aragon yet, in both size and design. And I'll explain what I mean in a bit. But before we get to all of that, let's fill your brain up with some numbers. This is a 40 millimeter wide watch with a shorter lug to lug just under 47, which I think will fit a wide variety of people. As long as your wrist is over six and a half, maybe six and three quarter inches, I think it'll be a good fit. Total thickness is also a little surprising here as it's right at 13 millimeters, which does include an exhibition case back as well as a sapphire crystal on top. Generally speaking, 13 millimeters is fairly standard for a diver. But it's surprising here for two reasons. The first is that it's an Aragon, and the second is that it has 500 meters of water resistance and a helium escape valve. Now, if we're keeping it real here, you don't need that. You don't need 500 meters of water resistance, and very few people on this earth will ever need a helium escape valve. You'll be fine with just the standard 200 meters. In fact, probably more than fine. So the watch here is a bit overbuilt than you would ever need. And that's not exactly a bad thing to have. Usually the only time I complain about helium escape valve or increased water resistance is when I think it compromises the design, where it makes the watch bigger or fatter than it needs to be. But here it's a 40 and still 13 millimeters thick. So it's all icing on the cake. Rounding everything out, you have a 20 millimeter lug width, an ion plated steel bezel, weighs in at a solid 170 grams, give or take a link or two, because remember, this is an Aragon. And it's all powered by a Seiko NH35A movement, the workhorse of the affordable watch. Also, when these come out, the prices will range from 165 to 180, depending on the colorway. And I believe that if you use the code Shane, it will take another $10 off. And if you didn't catch the promotional tag before, this watch was provided by Aragon and they're not asking for it back. Hence that promotional tag thing. That said, let's get to it. Now, the size here is part of what makes this watch so great, that it's so much more accessible than a lot of the larger Aragons. And on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, it's great. Maybe a tad heavy with the bracelet, but that also translates into a solid, well-made feel. It's well-balanced, stays where it needs to, and I think it also strikes a good balance between comfort and presence, especially with this very eye-catching teal version. And I think a lot of that is due to the great bracelet. The design here is a little bit different, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But it's very solid, like literally solid. Solid links, solid end links, and a mostly milled clasp with three micro adjusts. My only concern or complaint with it is that I wish it had a little bit more taper. But at the same time, tapering it might ruin the look. Although, truth be told, this isn't Aragon's first smaller watch, or even first 40. I've actually reviewed a few before. So while the sizing is part of what makes this one great and accessible, that's also true with some of the others. And the same can be said for being really well made. The case and bracelet have a good solid feel, while everything on the dial is sharp and well defined. Aragon is known for making really solid tool watches, and that's true here as well. What sets this one apart, though, is the design. That it's different, but not too different. And I'll explain what I mean here. And starting with the case, I think this one reminds me a lot of the mini turtles or slim turtles that Seiko's making. Although maybe not quite as round and the lugs here are a little more tapered. But in general, I've found this case style to be one of the more comfortable ones out there with a good balance of both case and dial presence. It comes across as more simple, streamlined, and very tooly. What more draws you in here is going to be the more interesting bezel, the bracelets, and the vibrant dial. 
where the bracelet is a modified oyster style with this really aggressive knurled center link, which also happens to match the knurling on the screwed down crown. The bezel is sunken, cut out, and then plated with this textured matte black, giving it a pretty different look. But it is one that's complete with a great clicky action. It's 120 click, unidirectional, no back play, all the good stuff. Then there's the dial, a mostly standard Aragon design. Maybe there's a tad too much text here, but there's some great depth with the raised black framed indices, a slightly raised metallic chapter ring, and the semi-skeletonized hands. As well as you have the standard date over at the right. Now, yes, I would prefer it at the 6, as well as prefer to color match date wheel. But at this price, I'm not going to complain too much. And I should point out that there will be a couple of more regular colorways, as well as a few more exotic ones, with this one kind of sitting in the middle with the yellow one. And I have to say that with this teal as a whole, it works. It's eye-catchingly vibrant, while offering a great level of contrast with the black framed hands and indices. Although, the hands here are a tad short. If I was going to offer any real complaint, it'd be that, as I would like to see the minute and second hand stretching more towards that chapter ring, or over it. But even as it is, it still looks great and is distinctly Aragon. And that, right there, is key to what makes this watch so great. Now, I'm sure there's some Seiko fans out there who are looking at this and thinking that it's just a little too much a little too out there, a little too strange. In fact, I'm sure there's some comments already down below. And if that's you, no worries. There are plenty of other more normal watches out there. But the thing is that while this is a tad different overall, for an Aragon, it's actually a bit tame. And this is a great example of that. This is the last Aragon watch I reviewed, with its Samuel L. Jackson purplish dial, wired lugs, and really interesting motorcycle chain bracelet. I thought it was cool, but not many of you did. And I gotta say, this is something a bit different. Whereas this, the new DF40, is mostly normal. Yet, at the same time, it's still very much an Aragon, filled with their design language. And that's what's really great about this one. That at this price, it's an original design that stands out, but not too far out. It's got a familiar feel, it also has a few distinctly different traits, all in a solid, well-made build. And let's be honest here, a lot of the divers out there from a lot of microbrands start to blend in after a while. They're the more normal ones, and if every diver really looked the same, this would get boring real quick. So while maybe not all of you will like this design, I'm glad it exists. And I'm sure there's some of you out there who will love this. Now, let's move on to Loom, because Loom is really the only disappointing thing here. And it's unfortunate that Loom on a diver is the one weak point. As the dial here fades out pretty quick, and then I'd say the hands are on par with a Vostok. So as far as watches in general go, I'd say it's okay. But if you're talking about divers, then this is on the weaker side of things. It'll probably do, but I'd love to see them put better loom on this. And the thing is, at this price, perhaps this is something I should have expected. Because at $160, there's got to be some sort of compromise here. It's a great price for a well-built watch, and you can't really find a better deal outside of AliExpress. And even those have a little bit of a compromise in that they're mostly homage watches. So in general, at this price point, there's always something that's compromised. And unfortunately here, it turns out to be the loom. Bottom line, this is not your standard, average, everyday diver. And that's a good thing. Because like I said, if every watch looked the same, this would get boring pretty quick. And perhaps this Aragon is a good halfway point between that, and some of Aragon's more out there designs. Making this one a good entry level point for the brand. Which, like I said, makes it the most accessible yet as it's a watch that I think could appeal to their existing fan base, as well as the many watch enthusiasts who have yet to try Aragon. And it doesn't hurt that it's so well built either. I mean, for 160 bucks, it's a great, solid, well-made, affordable tool watch. And that last part, affordable tool watch, is becoming harder and harder to find these days, or at least one with an original design. And this tool watch is one that's ready for just about anything, both in and out the water. 
Now, as usual, let me know your thoughts down below on the watch, on Aragon in general, and if you can think of another affordable diver that does it better, let me know that as well. Also, if you are interested in this one, don't forget to use that discount code for just a little bit more off. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.